And the reading's going slow. If you could right now in the chat, just tell us what grade level you teach or what subject you teach. That would be awesome. And today we're doing advanced HTML. Oh, it's recording. Great. So today we're doing um, advanced Canvas HTML. Um, no, this is being recorded and it will be posted to the Canyon Zoo website. Um, please make sure you're muted during this presentation. If you have a question, just type in the chat box and at an appropriate time, the facilitator will answer your question. Um, today, your presenters are Katie and Katie. Um, I am this Katie and I teach um, a tech coach for elementary schools. And then Katie, do you wanna introduce yourself? Sure, I am the ed tech coach at Corner Canyon High School. Um, and I've been in ed tech for, I think, five years now. Perfect. Um, today's learning intention, well, let's just read this here. Um, you'll know you're successful when I can implement HTML and L code to customize my Canvas pages. Um, and here's some of the things we're going to learn about. Um, so we're going to just jump right in. Um, and talk about it. Um, first off, this is on the Canyons U page. Um, why would you ever use HTML code? Um, some of the reasons are it helps you break down long pages. Um, it helps make sure they're not too busy, helps you put extra videos and activities in your pages, helps you use appropriate colors and organize your content. Um, so all of this information will be on Canyon Zoo as well, um, but we're going to walk you through some of it. Um, first off, HTML is a computer coding language. So the code is, um, is telling the computer um, what to do. So if you go into any page in your canvas, you can go to edit. And you, you can look and you can see all the pretty stuff you've done here. But if you come up here to HTML editor, it will show you the background script. So this is the, the language um, that's being spoken to the computer telling you what to do. Um, notice on this piece of code, you have an intro tag and a closing tag. Um, so Everything needs to be symmetrical when you're doing HTML coding. And now you look at this and you're, you're scared, um, but you don't need to be scared because we just have code you can copy and paste directly in here. So you would just command V the code in. So you don't need to know all of the parts and pieces of code. Um, so don't freak out, don't leave. Um, but that's, it's a language telling the computer what to do. So whenever you wanna use HTML, you're going to switch back and forth from the rich text editor, which shows you what it will actually look like, back to the HTML code. So the first thing that I wanted to show you um, was the iframe generator code. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my modules and I'm just going to start a new page. A lot of times when I do code, I like to start with an entirely new page. So I'm going to go to a module. I'm going to go over to the right side to the plus sign, and I'm going to add content to my module. It doesn't matter if you're adding an assignment, a quiz, a page, or a discussion. You can use it for all of, you can use HTML code for all of those different things. So I'm going to just do a page. I'm going to click new page, HTML example. And I'm going to add item. I'm going to come in and I'm going to edit this page. I'm going to push edit. So here's where I usually type, um, but today I don't want to type. I just want to start out going first to my HTML editor. And so what all I have to do is I have to go to find the codes, which we, Vanessa, will you send a copy of this to the chat? Um, all you have to do is you can click on these different links and they'll take you to the Canyons U page. 
or I just copied the short code here if you just want the code here. So right here, this is an iframe generator code. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that code and I'm going to put, make sure I'm in the HTML editor. So I click HTML editor and now all my toolbar went away and all I can do is post things here. So what this says is iframe equals copy website URL here. So what I want to do is I want to put the website URL there. So a really common example of why you would use this is for Pearson Realize if you teach the lower grades. Actually, it's Savis now, so Savis Realize actually. So I come to SavisRealize.com, I sign in, and students will still have to sign in no matter what. So this is, the, this is as far as we can take it into our Canvas page. So I'm going to copy this, copy that, and I'm going to come back to my tab. And right here where it says copy website URL here, I'm just going to paste, so command V, my code there. Notice the next part of the code says width and height. You can change this. Um, for Pearson Realize, a thousand by a thousand is actually the best. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over, back over to this, and now you can see that login page. So now I'm going to save and publish. And students, when they log in, this is what they'll see. So instead of having to go to a separate tab um, and opening Pearson Realize, they just open Pearson Realize or Savas, sorry, Savas right here inside of your page. So they don't have to leave Canvas. It's all self-contained. Um, and so at the top of that page, you could have given the directions. Um, so you could come up here and you could say, please log in to Savas and do assignment number one or whatever it is. So you can actually use the same iframe generator for anything you want. So say you wanted to add um, as an assignment and you want it on the Civil War. You come in, you open your assignment, you edit your assignment. And remember, okay, so you could, I like to start out with the HTML because it's a clean, Slate, but if you want, you could start with your assignment. Please watch or please view the below website and then submit one paragraph about what you learned. So now, if I and so, like, because I'm in the rich content editor, you can tell because I have bold, underline, all of this. So then, what I could do is I can come to the HTML editor. And notice it's added the P for paragraph, strong means it's bolded, and then this slash line means it's closing out. So you have the P at the start and the slash line closing it out. So what I would do if I wanted to add my website now is I would click down, I can come grab this code again. I could paste that code. I could go find a website about the Civil War Civil War. I could grab this code from up here. So you have the website, co the URL, copy that, come back, paste it, switch back to the rich content editor. And then, so just be careful, make sure you check it. Let's see if it works when we save it. So not all websites will work. So this is a good example of one not working. And that's actually history.com often doesn't work because of all the content they have in it. Uh, one thing you can do when you come in here is if you're like, that box is too big, um, you can change it to be 200 by 400 or whatever you want it to be. Um, so let's go see if we can find a different page. Let's try this one. So it doesn't always work, but it's some, it 
it usually works. So history.com just sometimes has some issues. Oh, that one did too. Another option for iframe generator is you can just Google iframe generator and you can come here and you can just post your generation and you can preview it. And yeah, so that one didn't work either. So one that does work that I know of is Kahoot. So here's an example of a Kahoot. So if you wanted to embed a Kahoot directly to your page, here's what you would have to do. So you can write your instructions there. You go to the HTML editor. Then you can go into Kahoot. So I'm going to go into my Kahoots I've made. I'm going to find one I like. So I'm like, ooh, I really want to do second grade maps. I'm going to push play. I'm going to do teach. Um, Actually, I'm going to do a sign. Both will work. So I'm going to do a sign. I'm going to create a new one. I'm going to create it. And what it will do is it's going to give me a URL down here. You can copy that URL. You can use, either use this iframe generator or that copy and code from this slide. Either will work. You will generate that. You'll come down here and copy that. Come back to your slide, make sure you're on the HTML. So if it says rich content, that means you're on the HTML and you'll paste that. And then you can toggle back. And now your Kahoot game's right there. It already has the join code. So it's second grade maps. All they do is put their nickname. Um, so that's one reason why you would use the, um, the, embed, the embedding is because you can add a Kahoot right here, and then you could say, type in when you're done with the Kahoot. Um, so that's one way to use the embed, and that was the iframe generator and the iframe generator code. Something else you should know, if you push this plus sign and you add an assignment or a page or whatever you want, um, you can embed YouTube videos directly to your page. I'm going to go into the YouTube page, and I'm going to edit this page. Um, you can go to your YouTube video. You find a YouTube video you want. You can come down here to the share button. This first one is the embed code. You can copy this embed by pushing copy. You come back. Um, there's two ways to do this. You could just go to the HTML editor code and switch back and that will put your video in. Or if you wanted, you can come to this insert edit media. So if you're ever able to find an embed code on anything, you can just do that insert edit media and you can post it right there. So either of those work, ways work, insert edit media, find the embed code or going to HTML and embedding it. Um, another example of this is the program Edpuzzle. Edpuzzle is a tool where you can put questions in the middle of a video. What we would do for this one is you'd come down here to share. So usually when you're trying to find an embed code, you're looking for the button that says share. Um, here's a public link or the embed code is what you're looking for. You can change the size. You'll copy the link. And then you can, once again, you can either come into the HTML editor or you can use this insert edit media embed post and so now that video is there twice because i did it two different ways and students can watch that video and when it comes to these questions it will come up so those were we did our first two learning intentions the iframe generator which allows you to put websites in the middle of your page um, and then the youtube video links um, the final thing I'm going to talk about is hex codes. Um, hex codes is finding um, different colors because um, you'll need colors when you do your different coding. So an example of this is if I start a new page, if I want to make the page look more colorful, so HTML practice, 
I want to make this page have like more features, one of those features is a horizontal line. So for that horizontal line, what you can do is you can copy this text right here. So you're getting this text. You come into the HTML editor. You click in and you paste, so Command V. Now when I switch back, now I have this line. And that line's very nice because then it divides my content. So then I could come back to the HTML editor and I could push enter or return and I could put another border there. And I come back and now I can see my content is divided. Um, so the hex codes, this is why you need to know the hex codes is because right here, you can see your border is two pixels a pixel is a measurement for computers, so to change that, you could make it thicker by doing 12 pixels. So this one's still two pixels, and this one's 12. So come back and look at that. So by knowing HTML, to make a bigger border right there. Then you can see it's solid, um, and the hex code is this. So that hex code is the color. So right here, that color is related to that number. To get a different color, there's a couple different ways. I have an extension called the eyedropper tool, which allows you to pick a color from a website. So maybe I wanted this blue color. So I click there, come back up here, and I can get that hex code, so the, that number, and I can paste it right there, and that will change the color darker. You can also, I also have hex codes here. You, there's also tons of websites where you can just go pick your color and you can get that number right there and you can come back and you can paste that. Um, so, so those are some different tools for you while you're using HTML. So now I'm going to turn the time over to questions or to Katie and then Katie is going to answer some more things. So first, questions. Any question? Great. Katie, do you want to take over the sure. screen and do the rest of the copy-paste HTML? Sorry, I'm just trying to find the right tab. Oh, and that's not the right one, sorry. Okay, here we go. All right, so I'm gonna show you some of the HTML copy and paste. And as Katie said, it is very simple in that it's just copy and paste. We added a few things within the code, but you don't really have to understand how to code to be able to use that copy and paste HTML. I put the Canyons U link to this module in the chat. If you haven't navigated to there and if you're trying to follow along, you may wanna go there just so you can copy and paste some of the code. And this is a good resource for you to save to access later to see the pieces of the code that I'm going to change. So with the copy and paste HTML, these are some of the different examples of things that you can do with copy and paste HTML. I really like the editor in the Canvas pages, but it has its limitations and this allows you to spruce up some of those content pages. So you can make horizontal lines as Katie just showed you. You can change the background color of a piece of text if you want to highlight a specific piece of information for your students. You can create a shadow box. You can have button or a pop-up dialog box like here where we click it and then it will have a box that pops up with information. This might be nice if I had an equation that I wanted students to try to solve on their own. And then after they solve on their own, they click here and they'd see the correct answer. 
So that could be an example of an activity that I could incorporate into a page. You can add buttons that link to other websites or other pages within your Canvas course. And then I'll show you how to do tabs. Tabs are great for breaking up content. You can see that this page uses tabs um, to separate content, content out. So let's start with looking at a sample page. Here is a lesson page that talks about Gothic literature. You can see that they've used this background color. They have several buttons, a line, um, and then another button. Actually, these are probably pop-ups. Yeah, these are pop-ups rather than buttons. And then the button at the bottom that goes to an outside resource. So to do these, if you are in the enhancing course content, all of the pages have the code right here for you. So if I click on background color, you can see that it has the code for me to copy. One thing I like about these pages is it, it provides this reminder of what am I copying or what am I changing in the code to edit, to edit how it looks on my page. So I'm gonna go to my Canvas course and I have started a page here for us. And let's say that I want my learning intentions to be in, have a different background color. So I can click the HTML editor, much like we were doing earlier, and then paste that code. Notice it says your text here. So if I want these learning intentions to be within there, I can actually edit while I'm in the rich content editor and it will keep everything that I had, which a lot of times it's easier to edit in that rich content editor than it is trying to find where to put it here. You'll notice that with several of our codes that we can just change it in the rich content editor. So with our background color, if we don't want it to be gray, we could use those hex colors just like Katie did. So you could just Google hex color blue and some will come up. I could also use that hex color website that Katie had and copy the hex color code here. I really like this color. Sorry, I have too many tabs open. So I would just paste that in. And then if I click back to my rich content editor, it's not really a color that I would probably recommend because it does make the text rather hard to see, but that is how we would change the HTML to get a different background color for that section. Okay, any questions so far on background color? So there's only two pieces on this one, the, H the hex code and the background color. Okay, let's move on to our next piece of code. The next one is the shadow box. I really like this, especially if you're in language arts and you want to pull a quote out. I think this one works really nicely. And then here's our code that we will copy. And then again, it has the anatomy of the code. I usually just open this in another window so I can look at it at the same time as the code. So the first part, the background color, will change the color of the shadow of the box. So it'd be this gray part right here that I would change. And then the second part where it says the F, this will change the highlighted text, um, will change the color of the box on the front. So here it's white in this example. And then our third is the border color. And then this is what your text will say. So let's go ahead and try that one. One thing to note, sometimes if you have a page that has a lot of content, whenever you go to 
go to the HTML editor, it can be difficult to find where you want that text box or pop-up box. So I just put several X's together in my rich content editor, and then I switch to the HTML editor, and then I'll just look through until I can find that. And then I will put it, put my code right next to that. And then I can see that it put it right next to that area. From here in my rich content ed editor, I can now edit that text. So if I want my success criteria to go right here, I can put it in my pop-up box. And then if I wanted to change the colors, I would do so here if I want the kind of the shadow box to be a different color or I would change it right here. If I want the white, the inside box to be different. And this one right here is the, um, the border color. So if I want the border to be a different color than the black that it is here, I would change it. I guess it's gray than the gray that uses around it. So again, I really like that you can edit the text once you're in here. You don't have to work in the HTML editor the entire time. Questions on the shadow box? All right. All of these instructions are on these pages as well. So if you are going back later, With the pop-up dialog box, it's very similar to the others. Uh, we have our code right here that you can copy. You can do text as long as you want, but um, the width is set for 300, so it is kind of narrow on your page. So if you have something really long, the pop-up box can also be really long. So one thing to note is if you have several pop-up boxes in your on the same content page or assignment, um, any editor, you will need to change this code a little bit. It has link one. And if we were doing multiple, so if I create multiple pop-up boxes on my page, I would need to have link one and then change it to link two. So I'm just going to go to the bottom and paste our code, oops, and grab it. Just gonna close that one so I... So I'm just using command C to copy. And then I'm in my HTML editor. So I'm gonna paste it. And if I were doing multiple buttons, I would paste it again, but this has to be changed to link two. And then if I had a third one, so this would also be link two. two. So if I had a third one, I would have to change those all to link three as they are connected together. And then this is where I would put any text that I want to be in the pop-up box. With this one, you would need to edit it within the HTML rather than in our, I guess you probably, it may work if you put it here too. If you get it in the right place, it will work. And then when we hit save, we're able to see our text. So you can see the click here. I could do click to reveal answer. I 
and then maybe I would have my equation here and then they click and the answer would show up for their equation if you wanted to do practice activities. Might be a good suggestion for this particular pop-up box. All right, questions on the pop-up box. No, okay. Um, for buttons, that procedure is a little bit different. For buttons, we will, um, they have different colors in them. So they have primary, secondary, success, warning, or danger are the names for the different colors. So you would just change the primary to either secondary success, warning, or danger to change the colors. The easiest way to do this one is to add your link first. So if I want to link to another page on Canvas, I could create my link and then highlight it. and then see where it has my link here of where it's going. I could just copy that. And then I'm gonna change this H reference to that canyons dot structure. Oh. Let me see what it looks like when I so you can see I have an extra P here, so I can go in and my link work and my button was created, but it looks like I have some extra code in there. If I can take that out, it's probably from one of my previous codes. And then I can change my title here, I don't know. One point one essential questions. Uh, it will go here. Sometimes you can see that I have some extra code there. When that will happen sometimes as you are working with HTML, I have found that a lot of times it's easier for me to just start and copy the code again and kind of start over um, if I am working with code you can kind of troubleshoot and just know that if it breaks, you can always kind of come back to the copy and paste and change those. Um, just kind of delete what you had done and then put in the code if you need to. All right, I think I have one more left and that is tabs. I love tabs, it's probably my most used code. So with the tabs, tabs work best if they are the only code used on that page. So I'm gonna start a new page. I know we're running out of time here, so I'll finish up. But I'm going to start a new page to use the code. The reason that this one does not work well with others is that some of the code, it uses this dot, or the slash div to tell when the next content is with the code. And some of the other HTML codes that we were just copying and pasting also use that. So if we're using buttons and other things within our tabs, sometimes the code will get confused because it, both codes use that slash div. So generally, I there are a few that it will work well together, but in general, I try to stick to only tabs and not use as much of the other HTML codes. The other embed codes usually will still work, like putting a video in one of the tabs will not cause problems, but um, some of the others will. So be aware of that. 
So in our tabs code, it's a little longer than our others, but they have put it in so you can see, put the title for the tab here. So I could do home and then maybe lesson and practice or homework. And you'll see I accidentally deleted one piece of the code. So how to put that back in there. And then this is where you put your content for the first. I can switch back to my rich content editor and edit this content here. One thing I would caution you on is try to leave this end period at the end of each section. Uh, sometimes if you delete that period, it'll also delete the end of the tab code. So just to make things easier for you, I usually leave that at least at the beginning, and then uh, you can take it out as a last step. But leaving the end there, it looks like it can help to keep that dot div that sometimes get, will get deleted if you delete the text. So I can edit it here again, I'm leaving the period. All right, and then when you hit save, oops. You're not able to view this one in the rich content editor like you are uh, the others, but you can see I have the content in each tab. You can add additional tabs if you need to. It's kind of like the buttons where we had to add the numbers. Here, I would just copy the last one and then I add, instead of three, it's gonna be four. And then I do the same right here. And then before you could, four might be the most tabs that I would recommend, but you could do a fifth in the same way that you just add. So you can see now we've, we have two practice because I left that one. Okay, so I know that was a quick intro to copy and paste HTML. What questions do you have? Vanessa, did we have any questions in the chat as we were going through? We did not. Okay. Have you used HTML coding, uh, copy and paste at all before? Anyone? I have, and I'm excited to try all <laughs> out because I've only tried the basics so I learned a lot today thank you awesome same I've used it a little bit but it's really helpful to have all the like copy paste stuff in one spot because that's awesome. like I always forget where I put it so that's really really helpful to have that all right there so thank you for for making that I also forget like which things which parts of the code change which color so it's nice to have those snippets to look back because even if I use it frequently I I forget those. All right, well, if we don't have any other questions. Oh, Debbie, did you wanna add anything? I just, I've never used this before, but um, I've used shortcuts, I think. Is, aren't there buttons to do some of that without putting in the H, H, um, <laughs> HTML? Yeah, so just by clicking those buttons on the right where it kind of creates links for you. Yeah, that's really the same idea where it's, almost writing the code for you. Um, and then you did the tabs. How would you put the content in each of those tabs then? Mm -hmm. So there is a place. I can either edit it right here. So see where it says home? This is where I'd put the content for the tabs. So it's the bottom one. The top one that's blue is the code to link to the, will be where the actual tab is and then And then this would be where I, the second, second tab content. 
and I can edit that in the HTML. Everything has to go between this fragment one and the div. So anything in here, and it can be really long if you'd like. This is all of my content to be in, frag in the first tab. This is all of my content to be in the second tab. So I could take all of this text right here and put it in my fourth tab. You do not, I was talking about leaving the period. You do not have to do that. It's just kind of a shortcut that's kind of saved me as sometimes it'll delete that dot div as you delete the period, it'll delete the code too, so. Um, are you, can we go back to the, what's already been created, I don't know if you have editing okay. abilities, just so I can see the HTML on the, on what, on the, you, the, <laughs> sorry, I don't know how to ask. No, you're this. fine. So on the Canvas course where it has all that information for us, can I see the HTML on, on that one? Yeah. So on the HTML on the tab. Yeah. So um, as if you were editing it, as if you were to, you were to create. Oh, it. on this what, page. Yeah. Can I see what that would yeah, look? Of course. Like? So this is the one that's finished, and then these are our three tabs, and then this is the content in each one, and then if I were to go in the HTML editor you can see that it has fragment one and then the fragment one title or tab one title, tab two, tab two title, tab three, tab title. And then you'll see this fragment one and then these are, this is all of the code for that section. Okay. And then you'll see a DIV and that's the end of the section. So sometimes if things aren't working for my code and I need to look at it, I just kind of search for that div and then I can see okay there's the beginning of the tab two and then here's the end of oh it's beginning so there's the end of tab one beginning of tab two okay and you can kind of see because it always uses that div to begin and end the code so if I everything I want to create in that tab I it looks just like I'm creating a page, I'm just going to put it in that section and then. Exactly, it has to be between that fragment one and the DIV. Okay. And you can, if you have it made in another one, you can copy um, it from another page because that's what happens a lot. So we're trying to combine pages in Canvas. You can copy the HTML code from another page and put it into this one so that you'd have it in a tab instead. Thank you. Yeah. All right, any other questions? Thanks for coming today. Katie, do you have anything to add? All right. Well, if you don't have any other questions, thanks for coming, see you, bye.